Uh, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the ICT's annual Hailing Island ceremony, a ceremony, seminar. <laughs> uh, well, it probably is a ceremony as well. I can't believe it was a year since I was here and we had um, you know, the award and then the, uh, the belly dancing and so on. And it uh, seems like a few months ago, but um, I guess a lot of you are here as well, and you, the year's gone by pretty quickly. I'm really pleased tonight that we can have this seminar focused on encouraging young people. It's a great idea by Steve. It's something I personally believe in a lot through some of my other work as well. So we were very keen to be able to, um, to do this event tonight and, and to see uh, the inputs of uh, four young speakers who who've very kindly come to uh, contribute to the evening. So there's no, no presentations from older people like me, although I believe Steve's going to say a few words after me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm sure you see the agenda. We've just moved it around a bit to make it flow better. But um, uh, these are the four presentations we've got tonight. Um, we've got a presentation from Alistair Bennett, Rainbow Technology on Liquid Resist. Um, and then we've got Michael Bowe from Polar talking about encour encouraging young people in the industry. And then we'll have a five-minute leg stretch there. And um, the, the next two presentations from Stacey and Daniel sort of running into each other. So that's the sort of format for the evening. Um, I'll shut up in a minute and let Steve take over for a few minutes. And then we'll get into the bulk of the... Uh, the presentations. I did want to say just a few words to give you an update on where we are and one or two things before I sit down. Um, this time last year I told you about um, the ASPIS project that we're involved in. The, the ICT has been um, the project coordinator for a, a multi-partner European research project looking at um, aspects of uh, nickel gold and uh, soldable finish reliability really. That project actually finishes on Monday We've been doing it for three years. It's been an absolute bloody nightmare administratively, but in terms of the work that's come out, there's a lot of good work come out. Some not so good, but you know, typical of what happens in a research project. But um, we've uh, actually managed to survive that, and it's been a really a good learning experience for the ICT in terms of working with other people and uh, coordinating this sort of project. There's tons of information around about what we've done. If anybody is interested, there's a website, aspis-pcb.eu. And there's a lot of information on the um, ICT website or in the ICT mm -hmm. journal or in various other publications you can access via the ICT website as well. So we've done three years in that and we're um, so ending, ending our involvement. Well, we've got, we've got two months to write up all the stuff and submit our final claims, but the project actually finishes on September the 30th. <coughs> the good news is, though, we've actually just picked up some more money for, um, for another project. And... Uh, some of you may have been at the IPC conference in uh, Luxembourg in the summer, and uh, I got press ganged into doing a very short presentation to fill in because somebody hadn't turned up. And I talked about crabs, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, we did some work a couple of years ago, uh, a feasibility study to look at the use of crab shells in uh, capturing heavy metals uh, in effluent, and we demonstrated that we could use crab shells, and you can use other things as well. Um, you can use crab shells to absorb copper in PCB manufacturing effluent and then you can actually extract the copper from the crab shells, uh, electroplate it out as you can see here on this wholesale plate and you can regenerate the, um, the ground crab shells and use them again, very much like an iron exchange resin. So we, we did that project with a little bit of money from the, uh, from the technology strategy board and um, based on those results we submitted a new proposal and we've just picked up a two year uh, pile of funding from the TSB which includes uh, a number of companies, but also has the ICT involved as the dissemination partner. So uh, we will be telling you more about this. The project will start on December the 1st, and uh, we'll be working on crabs uh, for two years. Uh, there's a slight, slight, I've got a little anecdote to tell you about this as well, because I was waiting for the results uh, from the TSB as to whether we got the funding or not for this. And I was on holiday, and I was promised that as soon as the information came in from the TSB, if we got it or not, there was a deadline date on a Friday, I would get a text because I was uh, out of email range and I was on, a, on the cat, sea cat coming back from, uh, uh, from France to, to Portsmouth. My wife was fast asleep next to me and I got this text message. It said, we've got the crabs. And I knocked my wife and said, we've got the crabs. <laughs> <laughs> and she tells everybody now that I uh, shouted across the ship, we've got crabs. So <laughs> that was the... That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we we have even more crabs now anyway. So, uh, yeah. We might, we might get the lobsters as well, but we're not sure about that yet. But um, uh, we'll keep you informed of how that project goes in, in over the coming months, and well, coming years anyway. But uh, it'll give us a bit, a bit more income and also help us to uh, promulgate the information across the industry. Just want to also tell you about our uh, forthcoming programme, always just give you an update on what we've got coming up. 
it's a long way from here, but we've got a, another evening seminar in Hartlepool on Bonfire Night, and uh, that's a great venue, so if you are at that way, uh, we'd love to see you there. Um, I should have said this is not a proposed Winford seminar, it's actually confirmed now. We've got a seminar in Winsford uh, and our AGM on the 6th of March next year. Our annual foundation course, which I'm sure you know we run every year at Loughborough University, is taking place again during Easter, and that's the 14th to 17th of April in Loughborough University campus itself with a, a, um, a preceding visit to Invertech in Tamworth. And the other thing I just want to again warn you about, or uh, give you an update on, is that um, next year's our 40th anniversary and we want to do something special with our annual symposium. We spent some time this afternoon thinking about what we might do. Um, we haven't really decided yet, but we want to do something a bit more special, maybe with an evening dinner as well the night before. It might be in Hartlepool because where we, if you've been there, they've got a really nice tight maritime museum there with a big ship and stuff. Um, and it may be in Swindon at the railway place there. So we're, we're looking into the possibilities. But sometime in June next year, there will be a big event. We'd like to get as many people as we can to celebrate the... And Bill's going to interrupt me now. Oh, sorry, I've got... Yeah, apologies. Yeah, Hartlepool is where we went. Yeah, yeah, Darlington, yeah. Oh, there's a place up north somewhere, you know, I don't quite know where they are, the darkest wastelands and all that. <laughs> Before you, yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, okay, thanks Bill, Darlington. Okay, so on to the theme of tonight then. Um, you know, I, I personally think we don't have enough people in the industry, you know, I, th I think I'm young and I'm about to retire, you know, we've got a lot of old people in the industry and it's age, so I, I'm really keen that we should be encouraging more young people to join, not just the PCB industry, but the UK <coughs> electronics industry, because it is a great value to the UK. And uh, anything we can all do to encourage that, I will wholeheartedly support. There's often been a stigma about young people joining manufacturing. You know, they all prefer to go into banking and all these other things. Uh, it hasn't been attractive to young workers. I had a, had a student from Loughborough University, he got a first in chemistry, came to work for me for a year, we offered him a job at the end of it. He said, one thing I've learned about chemistry is I don't want to do it. And he went into banking. And yet, I mean, what could be better than working with me? So <laughs> but he chose to go into banking. And that's, that's a problem. He was a really good chemist. Um, but we do at least in this country now. I mean, the politicians have been talking about encouraging manufacturing for many years. But in fact, um, they haven't really done much about it. But there does at last seem to be an acknowledgement that manufacturing is, is important. And in some instances, we're seeing great success in the UK, particularly in electronics and, and some of the specialist high value areas where we've got really big strengths, renewables, military, aerospace, medical, so on. So huge opportunities in the UK to capitalise on uh, this forthcoming expertise. And we have got many companies now making a bigger commitment to providing for their future workforce. You know, some of the bigger companies, look at Jaguar Land Rover, for example, what they're doing, and, uh, and also people like BAE and the electronics companies generally. So there is, there is a bit of a mood change, I think, and we should do what we can to uh, increase interest in getting training for young people. One of the things we're doing at Loughborough University um, is we support research in, in, for young people, obviously, but uh, we're just bidding for a postdoctoral research centre in collaboration with Herrick Watt University, and we've got some good feedback. If we get the funding for that, we'll be training just under 100 PhDs in five years uh, to take these guys, hopefully, into industry, you know. So that's one thing we're doing. Um, for my little bit myself, I, uh, I signed up as a Royal Society of Chemistry ambassador uh, last year, and I, uh, my role is it's only a small one, but he's actually trying to encourage young people to go into chemistry, which is very important for our industry. So what I'm trying to say is that we all can do things, big or small, uh, to encourage young people. So, uh, you know, if there's one message tonight, Go away. See what you can do to encourage young people. It's just speaking positively to them because they've got a lot of bad press, don't they? You know, they're all lazy buggers, don't work like we used to, and stuff like that. You know, you hear it all the time. They haven't got the work ethic and so on. It's not true. It's true for everybody, of course, but they're no different to the rest of us. So when you go away tonight, do, do think about what you can do for the young people you know to encourage them, particularly to go into science and, you know, if it's our industry, even better. Okay? And just to show that we mean this, we've, uh, we had our meeting this afternoon. And we've agreed to, um, to offer a 250 quid prize for the author of the best young person's paper that we publish in any one year in the ICT's journal. So that, I'll throw that down to anybody that's young here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, hopefully, it's a little gesture, but again, you know, it'll hopefully encourage people in the industry to think about things in a more scientific way, writing up what they do, and we'll be happy to award that prize probably at our annual symposium. So we haven't fleshed out the details yet, but that's just a small gesture. 
And finally, I'll shut up now, but thanks again to Steve and Spirit for your kind hospitality here. We really appreciate coming down. It's always a great event. We get a superb turnout, and it's a splendid evening. So thanks a lot, Steve, and I'll hand over to you now to say your uh, part. Good evening, everyone. I think everyone knows who I am, so I didn't put my name on the slides. Um, young people don't lick stamps. I think that fox quite a few people when I announced that was the title for and the theme for tonight. Um, some people didn't get it, some people did. Um, if you start Googling young people licking, it's an interesting subject. <laughs> um, and there's a few, there's a few no-shows tonight, so some of my slides aren't going to work because they're not here for me to take the piss out of. Um, there are a few housekeeping rules tonight that haven't been mentioned. If there is a, a fire bell, there is a fire. Um, my slideshow, um, there are no flashing images, but there are some abusive pictures. And Jake, if you're offended easily, you should go now. <laughs> so, look, young people don't lick stamps. Um, I put that to my marketing company and said, what do you think? Um, and they said, let me come back with you and, and we'll try and find something a little bit better. They didn't. So, have we got a thingy or are we just doing it by... Right. So, young people don't lick stamps. Uh, young people don't come to evening seminars either. Because um, I'm looking around the room, it, it, this has been an absolute journey to try and get this uh, off the ground. Um, I was saying to Bill earlier that um, yeah, we, I always said to Bill, well, I'll try and deliver him 100 people. Um, so if you can keep moving about, I can pretend I've delivered. Um, I think we've got about 60 or 70 tonight, which I'm still reasonably happy with, but I, I would have liked to have made it 100. We send out 2,000 named invites every week for five weeks leading up to this. Clearly uh, doesn't work. But we still have a good show of, of, of people here. There are not many people here in the under 30 category, which is very, you know, very disappointing. But we have got some fantastic speakers, and that in itself has been a journey. Stacey and I have been working hard to try and get people to come along. We had four, then we had none, then we had four again. It, it has been a real difficult task. And it is quite frightening to come up here to give a, a presentation. You've either got to be good or cocky. I'll let you know what I am. <laughs> So young people don't lick stamps, and that's Mark Goodwin, I think, um, <laughs> or Morris, I'm not sure, they both look alike. Um, so why don't they lick stamps? And it isn't because they don't taste nice, it's because you know, in, oh, it's, they don't need to. Young people don't write letters. When Stacey came to work for me, I was quite shocked. Uh, you know, that writing a letter seemed to be a, a really difficult task. She'd been to university, I hadn't. And I thought that she'd be able to write a letter. But actually, young people don't write letters. And so, therefore, they don't lick stamps. And I did get corrected by some people here tonight that actually no one licks stamps anymore. They come self-adhesive. <laughs> um, and when I was listening to Martin talk about young people, they do get a lot of bad press. And some of that I'll cover as I go along. And I'm not sure whose fault that is. Is that theirs or is it ours? They use a completely different method of communication. I spoke to my other daughter the other day about the way she addressed a, a, an email. She started it with, hey. And I said, it's either dear sir or it's hi. And she said, dad, it's just a generation thing. I said, you don't know the age of the person receiving it. Right? You don't start an email with, hey. But th that will be covered as we go through the evening. For me, it's a challenge to understand some of this. Some of the texts I receive, some of the emails I receive, I look at them. I did an exercise probably 20 years ago when I was on a management course that people read things seven different ways. I always seem to read it the wrong way and I get all aggressive and upset. Um, so if you don't understand it, STW. And that doesn't mean anything, does it? Until search the web, apparently, that means. And this is the kind of things that we're up against. Um, Text-based communication. I'm not going to read all this because there's too much for me and there's some big words in it. But it, it actually is the way people communicate. There's a finance guy in the room tonight and there's a, a, a person that he works with. I did a finance deal last month all by text. Everything I did by text. The guy on the other end of it is 30 years old. It took me longer than him. By the time I finished writing, he was responding. But we did the whole deal by text. And that is how people are communicating. Text, flicker, and all of these words that are coming up, they, they don't even spell them right. When you flicker, not have an e, e on the end and the R, e and the R. <coughs> It, the whole language is changing. And if you look at this information that comes from Ofcom, you know, 
50 texts a week being sent by young people. You know, it's no wonder they can't come to work. You know, there's 90 minutes on social media. You know, it's, they haven't got time to come to work. This new language, if you look at that, I mean, how many people in this room actually understand half of those code 9, C9, a parent in room? You know, it's, <laughs> And if you look at, if you can see in, in red here that I've written, there's, there's, a, there's something like 1,300 of these abbreviations on this Webopedia. Um, but the one that pissed me off was when Stacey sent me a text saying, BTW, I've paid the wages. And I, think, and I was with my wife, I said, BTW. She said, yeah, by the way. I said, by the fucking way. Right? <laughs> like, it, for me, it was like a wrong response, but actually there's probably nothing offensive by it, but it annoyed me. Um, but it's because we don't understand it. And so when Martin was saying about the young people, you know, that when they don't want to work or they're getting a bad press, is it us? You know, I saw an article written by GSPK re uh, recently in the Electronic Sourcing, writing about us older folk in the room here, you know, disseminating our skills and our knowledge into the young people. Well, we've just got to learn to speak properly, haven't we? I mean, you know, they, <laughs> they clearly are not going to understand us. So, progress. You know, if you look at that picture, you know, everyone you see now is walking around like this. I mean, what must the teachers be saying? I mean, when I was at school, the teachers were bloody masochists. They'd come around, straighten your shoulders, pull your head back. What are they doing now? Get your shoulders around, shove it in the computer. You know, it's you know, the, the people are changing shape. You don't see anybody walking around straight anymore. Everyone's got a phone in their hand. You know, and I just put these together. Yeah, an apple for me used to be something we ate. Oh, hang on. Tweeting with birds in the garden. Surfing, something we did on the beach. Turfing, I heard that one the other day. Apparently that's a TV. <coughs> TV on the internet. Raspberry Pi was something my nan made, and now it's a computer. A tablet was something a doctor gave us. An Android was something out of space. And an angry bird was a girl that we give a dose to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now it's a viral bloody game, but it used to be a viral infection. But <clears throat> so it is a different world. The young people are definitely in a different space to us. And, and I think if you look at how it's going, it's all electronic. You know, I, I would listen to a radio programme the other day on Radio 4 with Peter Day about in, in, um, you know, the wireless world. Everything is going to go wireless and it isn't, hasn't even broken yet. There's so many things now that are, are, are wireless technology and there's going to be so much more coming. So with all this technology, with all these e-readers, with all these gadgets and all these gizmos, I don't know why we have so many young people unemployed. If you look at the figures, it isn't the first time it's happened. If you look at that graph there, you know, these figures here, 20% of the people unemployed are aged between 16 and 24. It is unbelievable. And it isn't all their fault. And Martin has just said that as well. Um, and there are many factors. I'll flick through these. And we could come up with any of these here. It could be, that, as Martin said, youngsters don't want to work. I would say in some cases they don't. I mean, I believe they get paid too much, but that they would say different because um, if they're earning all this money and they're living at home, they can afford to have a day off. And some of the things that Stacey's experienced just coming to work for me when I moaned about young people, and Martin and myself and Peter Dobbs this year were involved in a recruitment campaign for apprentices. We looked at 30 CVs. We went to the Portsmouth Football Club there. We, uh, we ran a recruitment day. And then you try and get them to turn up for interview. You know, we had it at Rochester, we've had it at Portsmouth. You get ten people lined up for interview, three turn up, two don't want it. One that you do take on is a dickhead. It, it is absolutely really, really difficult to employ the young people as much as uh, you try. I mean, you, you could say the recession that's affected every age group. Um, parents, mollycoddling too much. I think a lot of us in this room who are parents, we do mollycoddle too much. When my dad brought us up, it was no board, no bed, and he actually kicked my brother out. And my brother didn't have a job. He was out. My neighbour took him in and then my nan took him in. But if we didn't bring home some wage and give them a bump some money, we was out. Nowadays, we don't even ask them for money. They come in anyway. They get sky in their bedrooms. China's taken some of the work, but hey, China's part of our life, has been for 20 years now. Mismatch of communication between generations. There is definitely that as a problem. There is an expectation that they've got when they come to our companies. There's an expectation from us when they turn up for interview. Uh, uh, we, uh, people of my age group, people of a lot of age group in here, they expect people to turn up in a tie with their hair brush and um, uh, present themselves differently. They turn up like they've just got out of bed or they're wearing their best slacks and their best sandals. It is a different world. Um, combination of everything. But what has become very obvious, and uh, again, Martin alluded to it, 
we need them. And if I look at my company, everyone, or a vast percentage of people around the com my company are a similar age to me, 38, and we're all going to be retiring together, and then what's left? Oh, there's nothing. And we, we lost a guy this month in our company, and it is a bit sad for me, a young guy called Shane, he's been with us for 11 years, started with us at 16, he's leaving now, I'm not going to say 26, but that's only 10, um, but he's, he's 26, coming on 27, he worked for us for a long time, he's leaving, he's a cam engineer, he started on the shop floor, he has been an absolute model employee. The mistake we've made, there is not an 18 or 19 year old that's going to take his job when he leaves. Why is he leaving? Nothing to do with us really, he's been offered a job to run a golf course, he's been with us 10, 11 years, why should he stay forever? We can't match his career expectations and the salary that he was going to uh, be offered outside of the business. Ten years, that's a long length of service, but we had no one coming behind him. Um, and probably we've forgotten how to train. Probably we've not given enough time. You know, when I did my apprenticeship, I stood alongside somebody for over a year and I was a lackey. And some of the young people don't want to be lackeys, but I was a lackey for a year. I did a four-year apprenticeship, and actually it was probably four years before I earned any money for my company. I would also say probably legislation, controls, have, we're probably a bit, a bit less tolerant nowadays. I would never have lasted in today's um, uh, economy and, uh, and the way people are employed. I had a very patient, very patient boss. So I've kind of covered that one. A lot of technology. Where's the problem? Is it us, the employers? Is it us that are not embracing uh, the, 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 you know, the change and the requirements of the young people? I was actually talking to somebody in the finance industry that's changed jobs, not for salary, for package. And the package, he was going to get an Apple, uh, an, an iPad, uh, and he was going to get a phone, he was going to get gym membership, and he was going to get a bike for work. It was about the whole package, you know, it wasn't about the money. It, he, he, he was going to get all these other nice things that uh, were more important to him. So we've seen <laughs> a lot of change in technology and it isn't all good. You know, we've got an obese population now, but even with all this obesity, people are still living longer. That is also causing problems for jobs. You know, there are people living longer, working longer. You know, there's a lot of people in this room past retirement age that are still working. Nothing wrong with that, but there's no jobs coming through for the youngsters either. Slim tell is fat people. Um, some of you who came here about four years ago, and I can't remember when I did it, four or five years ago, I gave a paper about the progression of our industry. And I spoke about how it started. And it probably started in the 40s and 50s when Bill was born. And um, they, we spoke about the pioneers coming into the industry. And I gave these, these, each of these years and these periods a name. So the pioneers came in with the new circuit boards. Morris remembers he took the photograph of the first circuit board with Peter Eisler, um, uh, uh, Paul Eisler. Um, you know, the first circuit board, Morris was claimed to fame as he took the picture. These guys were the pioneers. They invented the circuit board. It came into our industry in the 50s and started getting into mass production in the 60s. Then you had all the engineers coming out of these OEM companies, building their own companies, and, and we had some huge companies in this uh, country, over 400 PCB companies when in the 70s and 80s when I was uh, uh, starting out. Then we had the Mavericks, all those dickheads like me that thought I could do it better, and uh, we come out of those big corporates and started our own business. And then I said in the noughties we had the thinkers. We were all thinking, what the fuck have we done? Right? Because it all disappeared to China and we were left with an industry that was shrinking very, very quickly. Now we've got the geeks, right? and they're all over the world. You know, these guys that have got these fantastic ideas, and geek is a good word now. Some of the guys have got their geek stickers on. We have seen a geek explosion in America. It's starting to happen in this country, and we're not recognising them yet. This here, the Geek Squad, uh, it's an American company, and you'll see them in the car phone warehouse. They're at Blue Water in, uh, in Kent. Uh, uh, you know, the Geek Squad. These these geeks, you could be. A ge I mean, I wanted uh, Alan Morgan to be here because he's a geek, and you know, um, there are geeks in all industry sectors. If you look through a geek, when I was at school, when some of the people were at school, was the nerd in the playground that played the violin, and he got beaten up every Friday afternoon. But but the geek now, to be a geek now is to be cool and. Um, I'm just going to try and be cool. Hang on a second. I've got some. So, so, geeks are cool. Look at Lee. He's got the orange. He's got the black ones. And so, 
it's cool now to be a geek. People want to be geeks. They want to be recognised as geeks. Roy's a geek. Look, he's sitting at the front. Now, look. So, it, if you go on the internet, there's lots and lots of words about geek. There are many, many good quality geeks. Um, you know, Zuckerberg's a geek. You know, Facebook is an absolute um, um, phenomenon. Do we know any geeks? <laughs> Les is a geek, and he's anal about the circuit boards. He loves them. Alan's a gadget geek. I mean, unfortunately, he's not, I can't see with that one. Um, Alan's not here, unfortunately. He phoned me sick this morning at 7 o'clock, really apologising for not turning up. But Alan's got every gadget in his bag. Jake's here. <laughs> he's a wannabe geek. He'd love to be a geek, but he's, look, he's there with his dad's jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> but Jake is one of the younger ones in the audience tonight. I mean, Jake's probably 35, 36, something like that, 38, looks 40, 50, but it, I used to think he's a right dick, actually, but he's, he's come up with some really good things, and this is the first thing I think he's done good. Uh, he's got this inkjet printer off the ground, brilliant, brilliant, low-cost inkjet printer, he's getting them made in Poland, and I actually have to say he's done a good job here, and what a great name, Circa Print. I mean, how did he think of that? Uh, and some of you are in the room to remember this. Circa print. Right? I mean, there's a lot of people in the room here. I did my apprenticeship here. I started there in 1977. And I don't know how Jake thought of that name. What well, a fantastic, innovative idea. And I mean, for me, new technology, old name. It's got some legs, though, Jake. I think that it's going to work for you. Um, so they did go bust, yeah, in 1991. But I would say to Jake, if you need staff, I've still got my business cards. Still got my name badge. <laughs> I've also got merchandise. I've still got my tie. <laughs> and I've still got my little model car that they gave me. <laughs> so I just want to say well done to Jake for that, because it is a very good, it's worth every bit of 20 quid. Um, so <laughs> the speakers we've got tonight, I've got to extend my thanks to... <laughs> Rainbow for coming forward and, and, and you're giving us a great guy here for speaking tonight. Polar, we've got a, 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 a speaker here coming from America tonight. So we've got Scotland, America, two foreigners in the room. Um, and we've got Daniel Jubb from the, 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 yeah, the Falcon Project, which is going to talk to us about rockets. And um, I've got to say thank you to my daughter, because my daughter's also going to give a, a, a paper as well. And um, yeah, she was always interested in manufacturing. And uh, you know, there's a pride modelling she did there. You know, the school asked her to make a mosque. I'm just glad we took a picture when she went to school because they only made them to blow them up in science. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, keep calm, lick stamps. That's me. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>